So I can uh, come in here and start my scraping script. So I'm just going to do a little uh, a little commentary here. So uh, scraping demo for DAT129 before scraping a page check. Let's do this. And two. What I'm looking for is distinctive uh, class names or tag names. Um, so if, if we pass both of those checks, um, we're going to go ahead and start our scraping process. Um, so we're going to use the uh, same library that we used for um, uh, APIs, which is uh, URL lib. So we're going to import URL lib. And then some of you will also will need to get our beautiful soup uh, installed. So um, the first thing to check is just trying your import. Uh, it's called BS4, import BS, or from BS4, sorry. The library is called BS4, Beautiful Soup 4, import the Beautiful Soup uh, module. So go ahead and try running that. Um, if you cannot find that module, uh, you'll want to run off and do your pip install BS4, um, which should be a pretty standard thing. So if I come in here, uh, it should tell me that I already have it on update. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is raise your hand as soon as you have um, the BS4 library that works. Sorry, I might have put some of your hands down or too early. And then this will be a case where if you are having trouble installing that, please group chat it um, since it will be hard for me to give individualized help until we have a little bit more time at the end. If you have it working, now is the time to go out and look for a website that you might want to scrape and ask a question of the data that you can scrape. Um, so I'm going to give people, let's take a, why don't we take a 10 minute break uh, since we're kind of in the middle. So let's come back at um, uh, 7.50, so 1950. Uh, I'm going to set up a little tracker page uh, for reporting this. And if you're having problems with installing BS4, um, please uh group chat out so we can help you. And again, raise that hand as soon as you have effectively imported BS4 from Beautiful Soup. That's all the libraries we need. All right. Um, Oh, great. Kayla got it. Super. Okay, so we're in our coding. We're now off in Python land. And um, so again, our goal, uh, what I did, uh, let me finish this and then I'll show you. Uh, actually, no, I'll show you. I put up our link to our tracker. So as usual, F5 is your best friend. Uh, if you refresh that page, our schedule, um, I added the scraping project tracker, which will take you to this uh, Google Doc, <clears throat> where you can tell us what you're trying to scrape and then uh, start putting in some data there based on your evolving project progress. So Loretta's scraping Goodreads here. Um, 
I'm actually going to move uh, this there. Wow, this, this shared Google Drive is really amazing. The fact that it can cope with all this stuff is amazing. Um, so this is a place for us to just track how you're doing on your project. Um, so I'm putting in my sample here, and then um, I will include the link to this sample scraping script, uh, which I already have on my repo now um, before the night's through. So that's there. I'm going to jump back to our scraping project. So again, please scream if something on my uh, screen is not uh, visible. I think I'm on my share, so I think we're in good shape. OK, again, thanks for everyone's patience with this new media, medium. Um, I'm pulling up my uh, sample in class. There it is. OK, so remember, Beautiful Soup. So Beautiful Soup is a parsing library, uh, which will accept text of any it will accept arbitrary text. So Beautiful Soup is not going to be the one to go out and get the HTML. Um, instead, we're going to use the same URL library we did before. So I'm going to start by making uh, just a modular uh, setup here. So I'm going to start by building my URL that can grab me search pages of an arbitrary search term. So I'm going to make a function called uh, get search uh, URL um, and I'm just going to do a little more here so goodreads.com scraping so if I think about my question would be do books about Python have uh, do books about let's say Java on average have longer titles than books on Python. The reason this might be interesting is that folks have said that uh, you know a Python programmer is more productive because it takes fewer words and so does the terseness of Python, Python trickle down to even the naming of the books. So that could be an interesting question. So I'm going to make a function that takes in a, uh, a URL search term and then I'm just going to build that string um, using string formatting. I just have to rearrange my page here for just a second. Uh, tai Chi, you're a whiz. Thank you. Sorry, one minute. I'm trying to get things so I can see everything. So what I'm going to do is go out to my Goodreads site, and just like we did with the API, API, I'm going to grab my URL because I want to be able to programmatically stick in Python. Okay, so I'm going to grab that and then jump back to my Python. I'm just going to start by putting it in a string. And then... Now, interestingly, notice how um, there's the UTF-8 encoding, which is the character set that's common on the internet. I have a feeling that we don't need that. Yes. So, in fact, we don't need that. It will default to UTF-8. I'm going to try to make things as simple as possible. So you see, this is kind of interesting. Um, when I originally did that, it had um, it had that weird check mark, which is uh, a non-standard character in ASCII, but is certainly a character in UTF-8. So I'm I just have to check that my search terms are uh, are nice and clean. So I'm going to clean that up. And so this is where Python is. So I'm going to replace this with an arbitrary string. So that's my um, percent sign s. 
and then I'm gonna tell it, tell the interpreter where I have that string. I'm gonna take in. I'm gonna send in my search term. So I'm gonna cast um, whatever was passed in to a string so that I don't get any errors. Eric, can you uh, can you explain uh, what you're doing here again? Um, yep. I think I so, might have missed something. Absolutely. So this is called uh, Python string formatting. So what I'm telling the interpreter is, um, I am giving it an arbitrary string, who which can contain special control characters, which stand for the type of information, the type of data that I want to insert into this string. And the percent sign s is the notation for a string. And so the interpreter will then be looking for directly following that string that contains a special search character. It will then be looking for a variable that uh, contains the number, uh, contains the data that I want to then inject into that very spot. And if in my case, I only have one control character, which is one string. So I can give it a single, uh, a list with a single item, or sorry, a tuple with a single item. And that is going to be my passed in argument term cast to a string. And so uh, I need to use this special percent sign following the string to tell the interpreter that I'm about to give you that thing to inject into the very spot that I indicated somewhere in that string. If you do not have the percent sign with the variable after it, it will interpret this as uh, unescaped percent sign s, I believe. I'd have to check it. Um, and I believe if we do. Um, Uh, I guess it's, I, I was wrong. It's called string literal interpolation. Um, so this is the actual specification. I wonder if there's a better article. They, they do this again where the, the search does not come up with um, let's do string. I should have put, pulled this up before. These are all their reference pages. Wow. Yeah, that's the best I could come up with this horrible, horrible site. But that's what's going on there. Um, OK, so uh, once we've got that, let's just be as simple as possible. So I'm going to then return that URL with that search term built in. Again, we can, um, if we wanted, if I was building this out more thoroughly, I would look at this. Uh, I could strip out the white space, um, which probably is a good idea. but. I just want to get it simply working right now. Um, so the next thing we're going to do once we get the URL is we can then use the URL library to go and grab the actual HTML. So this is going to just grab the entire HTML page. And if I pass it the URL, it'll go out to the internet and fetch it. So I'm going to make a, uh, let's, I should do a better job at my comments. Um, so, um, uh, 
Okay, and so now we'll say So then here's where we're going to pop in. Um, we're going to start by building a formal request of the internet. So I'm going to ask my URL library for uh, to go and assemble a request. And so I do that by using the request object and I give it my URL. And then with this request, I'm going to use a, uh, an open with resource management. So um, I'm going to say So what's going on here is I've built the request object, but I haven't yet gone to the internet and actually fetched it yet. So I build the request object, so I, I can comment that here. So and then um, So what I'm doing here is now I'll say as response. So what this structure is doing is it's managing my um, network access through the computer. Um, and I need to give it my request object. So the URL library has a request module and that request module has the method URL open. I pass in that request object that I just built. It's then going to give me a handle to that request object as the variable response. And the only thing I'm going to do now for simplicity is I'm just going to return the response having read the HTML from it. And again, this is going to manage dealing with um, opening and closing that connection to the, um, the internet via your standard gateway. It, will, it, will, uh, it knows how to navigate the, the web. OK, so um, I now have these two functions um, set up. So I can, uh, I can then s just start by seeing if I can get it to, get it to work. So I'm going to see if those compile, which they do. Uh, and then I'm going to open a new, uh, a new cell. So I'm going to say, um, And then, and I'm just going to be in scripting mode, so I'm just going to, just going to try it here. So page text uh, equals get page uh, text. Uh, let's give it a. Let's see what comes out. Uh, 
So what I want to try to do, let's let's build this out a little more slowly. We can uh, test the URL. So let's Okay, so I'm checking that my URL made it, uh, was assembled correctly. So again, I want to test the, the components modularly enough that I can see where things might go wrong. So it looks like my URL came through okay. I've got virus sitting there under the, um, under the, uh, the query term. So now I'm going to try my page text. So get page text if I give it my URL. Ah, look at all that junk. That junk is going to become our beautiful soup in just a minute. So this, <laughs> this is the HTML. The beautiful soup is going to be able to just turn into something parsable. Uh, so we want to get to the point where you can you can get this uh, spit out. So let's go ahead and I'm going to lower everyone's hands. Once you've got a, uh, once you can get something from the internet using a URL, go ahead and raise that hand. Hey, Eric, um, yeah. my script is returning an error saying um, module URL lib dot request has no attribute request. Has no attribute. Oh, I don't, I didn't have a capital R. Does that matter? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay. Give that a try. I think it worked. HTTP. Error. It just says not found. Um, what I would do is start with your um, start with URL and drop it right in the browser and see what the browser gives you, and then we can debug from there. Am I doing okay with my screen? Can you see my code? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so. The first thing that I need to do is I'm going to give it that page text. So the beautiful soup object, when I make it, what I pass into the constructor is I pass in my page text. So this is um, uh, Not a reference, and the name of our desired parser. So beautiful soup can also parse um, other types of text, but in our case, we just want to tell it that we are giving you HTML. And so, Pass in our raw HTML as our page text that we got from our nice method. And then now, uh, now we're in the land of accessing stuff on our soup object. 
So the next phase, this is where you'll want to have your documentation handy, which is there are a couple of key methods that you'll call on your soup. So you can think of now that we've called beautiful soup, we have our soup, which we can extract uh, components of with specific calls to, um, they're going to be find or find all, depending on what we want. So I'm just, I know, Lou, I know we're teaching now. You're parsing, you're parsing, come on, come on. Um, so we're going to say soup.findall is our key method. So this is where we build on our HTML knowledge. So from what I remember in beautiful soup, or what I remember from my HTML here in my F12, I'm always going to want to have my page up in developer mode. You're now HTML readers. Um, you, this is where you have to know enough HTML to tell beautiful soup what to do. So that's why we spent an hour doing HTML. Um, so what did I need again? I'm going to go and grab my element. I want this title. And I'm going to grab that by trying to get this anchor tag. And so I'm going to say in my uh, Python, I'm going to say, get me all of the anchor tags. And the way that this method is designed, and I'll show you the documentation in a second, is you say, I want the anchor tags whose class is book title. This defaults to taking in class because class is the basic way that we organize elements in HTML. So the find all method is going to interpret that second argument as the class of the anchor tag. And so um, uh, let's store that in books. Actually, I'll call it um, book uh, a tags. Book a tags. Okay, and let's let's see if we can just start by. Um, uh, actually, I I sorry about not matching this with my um, inquiry question here. Um, let's ask. What I actually want to ask here is um, what percent of Python books have subtitles? Sorry about that. Uh, so now that I have, so what I'm getting is, again, I'm getting this whole thing here, including all of its kids. That's very important that when I get a tag, I get the whole subtree. I get the tag and its children. The children come with the parent, always. They will always come with their parents. I'm sorry, the parents will always come with their kids. Um, so I'm just going to start by uh, making some variables. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, Oh, that's right. So I'm just, I just want to start looking for um, books that have some sort of, uh, some sort of subtitles. So some colonized somethings after it, which is not particularly interesting yet, but we're just getting something to work. Um, so I'm going to, just going to make some totals. So total titles, start those at zero. Oh, see, there's my Java coming out. It came out real quick. Um, subtitles equals zero. Um, and so now this is where we've got our, um, this is an iterable, uh, iterable object containing special beautiful soup element objects. And so we can iterate over them. So we can say um, for uh, book in book a tags, um, I can go grab the title. 
Now, <clears throat> this is where we learn about uh, another another key method. So, um, the so we can say book A tags is iterable and contains um, all the mini trees whose parent is an anchor is an A tag. Um, so let me mark that up here too. So this is getting um, okay. So what this means is this allows me to say this. I can say title equals book dot. Find. What do I need to find? What I'm trying to find is this little span because this actually has um, this has the text of the book that I want. So I can say book.find and then what am I finding? This is where I can give it the span tag name. And then just like we learned uh, by diagramming the tree, that we have to go one level down. So just finding the span tag is not enough. I have to ask it for its text. So that's where I'm going to say um, book.findspan.string. And then I'm going to print out title. Oh, look at that. That is cool. That's wicked cool. So again, what I did here, I'll just annotate while you're getting caught up, um, is use find to grab the span inside the A and extract the text inside the span. So I'm asking for is all of the stuff in between those tags by calling dot string. I guess it's actually not calling because it's not a method. It's, a, it's accessing the variable string. And then I can print it out. So now I have um, and then I can just ask um, if the title has a, a, a colon. Oh, hi, Lou. So if oh no, I did camel case again. So then I can um, print out my titles. And then I can calculate my uh, subtitles.
Yeah, a quarter of them have subtitles. So there's some, there's our first rudimentary run through of how we grabbed all the anchor tags and then we iterate over that set and we run, we can do all sorts of metrics. There's all sorts of string processing and we could count the number of words and blah, blah, blah. Um, but this gets us to a, uh, a, a stable spot. So I'm going to uh, lower your hands here. Um, as you're getting caught up there, let's just all jump back over to, uh, actually, let me go ahead and put your hand up when you've got your soup doing its beautiful work. And I'll, I, then I'll close that with a little commentary on the documentation. Great. Oh, sorry. Let me bring it back. Oh, no. And again, the rudiments of my code, I just posted a link to. Um, if you refresh our scraping page, um, I added a link here under sample code on GitHub, and it's linked right here under um, in class scrape of Goodreads. So again, throw that hand up when you got it working. And if you've got it working, you can start sleuthing your uh, other other website for Scrapen. Hey, Eric, uh, I've got a quick question. Yeah. Um, so I was doing the Goodreads one uh, as well. I was just looking for titles that have um, the word data in it when you search Python books. Yeah. Um, is there a way to get it to search more than the first page of the results? Yes. Yeah, so that's where, um, that's where the next phase comes in, which is, you will have to do some more tinkering with the, uh, you'll have to dig into that page and we'll have to look for what does the, the next button look like. So this is where the API uh, shows its strength in that the API is designed to give you that as a batch. We need to come down here and look at um, how these links work. So if I'd come here, I'd say inspect and then what I want to try to do is pull out, um, look at these URLs. And gotcha. see how they're doing pages. So what you want to do is you'll make another method for, looks like what's going on is it's giving us a search. So see how it assigned a query ID right there? Mm-hmm. So I would need to extract, actually I could probably just extract this, um, uh, this anchor tag. So you'd, um, we can do that 
uh, if you want, we can jump in and we'll grab the anchors whose um, um, REL attribute is next, get the hypertext reference, and then find that page reference, and then go through and ask for that URL again. So you'd, you'd have to, um, you, you'd write methods that would help you build a sequence of calls to that. Okay. And that's, part, that's part of the, um, what I want people to try to do first is to find a, a novel page and get something out of it. And then as you get some experience navigating through the soup, it'll become quite natural to go and find this um, hyperlink and then figure out probably using regular expressions to pull out that, um, that number and then replace it, that kind of thing. So let me show you, that might be a good uh, segue into the documentation. So um, what the step to do that would be to familiarize yourself with what kind of tools um, you have, because what I'm guessing, um, the way that I'd probably try to do that is see what the container is. Um, it looks like we're lucky that that uh, that anchor tag has that REL attribute. These other ones would be hard to get because there's nothing unique about them, and the div that they're in is not labeled with a with a a particular um, a class. So it's it's going to be very unique to the the site, and so we can try tinkering with that here. Um, that's it's a great question. Is there, with that, I'm thinking you'd probably run like a while loop while like you can reference that next. What would, um, so what would happen at the end, like when you get to the last page, would it just not have that REL next available? Yeah, and it looks like here what's going to, the, so what they've done, I don't, it may be the case that they've limited to a hundred. Let's actually let's see what happens when I go to the page one hundred. Okay. Um, so now, what if I try going to page one hundred and one? I'm going to see if it stops. Is that the same page? I didn't look. The Python three by Ernst. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's behaving a little bit unusually in that it's allowing me to go to later pages, but it doesn't think that it's at a later page. Um, so you might be able to just keep going. What, you'll, what you would need to do is you would be asking the soup. At some point, you would get to a page that has no book, that has no anchor tags with that, um, with that class. So you would find that at some point this loop would have nothing in it, and then you would know that you're done. So you'd probably want to have a flag um, for continue page looping um, and build out a modular uh, set of methods. So you'd have something like, probably have some method like, um, uh, um, why well, I can't think on my feet just at this at this moment, but we'd want to th we'd you have to be clever about how you stop your looping because apparently you could keep going. Um, how many results did we get here? We got twenty a page, so um, looks like we'd have quite a few more pages. Um, so yeah, you could keep going for quite a while. But the HTML is not set up to do that, so you'd have to, again, be kind of tricky with that, with the URL building, and just keep going until it's done finding books. And so that could be, if you wanted to take that on as a project, uh, instead of finding a new site, I think that would be a worthwhile goal. Was that Michael? 
Yeah. It actually, uh, it, it looks like you can set up the original URL to uh, include that page equals one. So if I started there and then put in that um, oh, yeah. percentage sign and kind of, uh, well, it would still have to be a way to stop it, but I think yeah, that's good a way to start. And so Michael's doing what a good scraper does is tinkers with URLs and sees how they work and what doesn't work. And remember that the there's no hard once once this URL makes it to the server, there's no hard and fast standard for what the server does with it. Some servers will be very flexible if you give them additional attributes. Some servers will say, "Oh, that's weird. I don't like that. I don't. I don't want to deal with that," and shut you down. Um, if the servers are really good and they see you doing a bunch of wacko stuff, they'll block your IP. Um, so it'd be kind of fun if you can get to that point. I mean, not fun. Now, you shouldn't try to get to that point, but if you did, um, you might have triggered, they might have had a good system set up on the other end. Um, so I just want to bring you back to the documentation. We're almost at time. Um, the documentation is heavy, but it's also very useful. Um, and so again, this is linked here on our scraping page. This is the second bullet. Um, what I want you to see is this does our sample, so it read in a, a page. Um, it gives you, uh, notice that there are two, um, there's uh, what's called a, a parameterized version of a lot of these methods and then a more method-based version. So um, when I was here, I did uh, book dot find and then I called a method and passed in span but uh, what you'll notice is that there are programmatic ways I think um, there, there are ways that you can just say soup dot a which says grab me the first anchor tag in the soup so what the the mem the programmers of beautiful soup have exposed the standard HTML tags as variables on the soup object, which from object-oriented folks will say, ooh, that's cool. Um, and, and so just note that, that that will look kind of interesting because these aren't methods. These are actually member variables that are being populated based on the contents of the soup inside. Um, so you'll see that um, the library documentation does what we just did, um, which is you can do your find all and give it tags to look through. Um, and then there's just some information about the parsers. Um, what you'll find is when you get to a site, you'll have to dig into that HTML and you'll want to you know, give me a call if you need help. Um, or talk to someone that knows HTML well, because sometimes you'll get uh, weird looking stuff, like I need to try to grab a span tag that doesn't, I need to grab an anchor tag that doesn't have a class, but the parent has this weird attribute. Um, so you'll want to spend some time with the documentation uh, to see what kinds of things it can snake into. Um, what I want to show you is, um, navigating the tree. So here, here's the handy thing that sometimes you'll find um, that the only thing you can do is you can only get to a parent and you have to do some tree, some tree navigation to get down to the thing that you actually need. So again, I'm just going to go back and um, uh, let me put this, this is kind of in an ugly form, I apologize for that. Let's put, uh, I'm going to make a new term here. I'm just going to grab my soup so I can play with this a little bit more um, programmatically. So what I encourage you to do is set yourself up so that you have your soup object, and then you can just start playing with the, with the soup. Um, so I can come here and say, all right, I'm reading my documentation. What if I just say print soup.title? 
you know, just just get if you haven't done any HTML, just get comfy with this. Yeah, look. So notice what it gave you is it gave you the entire tag, including the entire element, including the tags. But I can say um, soup title dot text. Is it? Yeah. So um, you can just practice how you get stuff out of the soup object as you go through because almost all of these methods are just going to be calling some series of finding find alls and finds and get children on your soup object um, so see beautiful soup object has children in this case the html tag is the child of the soup object um, and so you can even get the contents by number. So if I say soup.contents and say what's the 23rd child of the soup? Uh, what's the fourth child of my soup? It's that very low, level, it's that cool thing that they do for tracking uh, the page views. Um, so this the tree is is pretty interesting, um, and again this is a uh, another good way of just generically getting the children of something. So if I come back to my page, um, where are you, Goodreads? Oh, that's the there you are. So if I look at my HTML again. And I say, well, what if I want to explore this menu bar? What about that? Um, so if I say, what is this thing? Look at that. So div class tabs. So if I just try, see how I see that this box with the, um, the links at the top has a class of tabs. So if I just come here and say um, soup dot come back soup I'm getting way too out of control here with my windows so if I do soup dot um, soup.find and then I just say um, this is a div and the class is what again tabs and then I can say dot children And looks like it gave me, it's got an iterator object. So then I could just say, uh, let's try There they are. Um, so it's part of part of the uh, process of scraping is is just navigating through your page and seeing what you can find. So see what are these? What are these elements? These are spans. And so now I just if I say t dot string, I think it'll give me the tab names. There they are. Um, what if I do rstrip? Uh, 
I don't remember what that was called. Um, but you can, there's methods for stripping out the white space. Um, so again, I really encourage you to find your site and then just get up and cozy with your uh, documentation um, and how to move through the parents. So see how it, it walks you through sideways. Again, what that means is it means finding your siblings um, through here. So if I said, um, notice I can get that div's children but I could also say get, uh, get next sibling. So that would be whatever the parallel container is. So look here at my HTML. So if I, sub if I slurp that up, the, uh, the sibling of thy tab tag is actually this ugly JavaScript stuff. Um, this is my final closing moment because we're at almost at time. Notice this, the script tag. Um, I've had actually had several students that have been um, scraping on their own time email me about script. Um, JavaScript is the program lang programming language of the World Wide Web, and it includes all of the logic and variable management and looping, all the stuff that we'd expect out of a programming language lives in JavaScript and currently beautiful soup at least the way we're dealing with it does not let us interact with this script stuff so you'll find that there are script tags scattered all over the place and those are pieces of JavaScript that uh, animate the buttons and things that are moving around are usually related to JavaScript and so if you find those um, I don't think there's much we can do with them um, I bet we can probably print out the contents of it at least. So let's see what happens. So if I say find and then I say next sibling. So let's see what if I um, There it is. There's the script. So it pulled, see how it, it just went down the tree. It didn't go down the tree. It went over on the tree. Uh, it went to the very next sibling, which was the other item that has the parent whose div is class stacked. Um, and so I bet I can pull out uh, the string on that. So yeah, this is the JavaScript. So I guess if you really need, if the problem is you can get the JavaScript, but that doesn't mean you can run it. And the JavaScript itself isn't very useful as text. It's useful as program language that runs in the browser. Um, so if you run into script stuff, that's kind of our dead end at this stage. Whew. Okay, if you, none of you have met Loretta yet, Loretta was the, the um, scraper of tonight. Um, so let me stop my share and um, and we'll close this out. So um, thank you for joining me for Python. I'm going to stay on here uh, until you need me, until you're done, uh, if you need some individual help on your screens. Um, what I'd like you to try to do for next week is choose a site and try to get something scraped out of it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on learning how to uh, divide y'all into little subgroup rooms, um, which I think I can do, but I may not have enabled it on my master account. Um, and so I want to give you, a, I think there's a way that I can put you in breakout groups and you can help each other. So um, just remember to give me a call on the phone is the most reliable way to get help. Uh, I check email every few days um, or somewhat sporadically. So if you have something urgent, I'd love to help you. Just give me a call and leave a message, uh, and then I'll be watching your, uh, your tracker here. So at minimum, find a site, see if you can get something scraped out, and then uh, update your status.